If you do this right, this is a great way to make a ton of money. So whether you want to build a traditional marketplace, a digital marketplace or a service based marketplace, you will need a powerful solution that's easy to use, but most importantly, something scalable that has all the features you need to grow. So I set myself a goal to find the ideal solution. And guess what? I found it and it has so many features. Let me show you. So as the admin of the website, you can manage all your vendors in one place, set different types of commission like flat rate, percentage or combined. You get complete admin reports. You can create coupons, make announcement, product advertising. It has a built-in automatic withdrawal system to pay your vendors. And obviously it has all the features you would expect to help your vendors. Things like earning reports and statement, order management, shipping status, and a lot more. And it wouldn't be complete without a great customer experience with clean email notifications, find product by selecting multiple categories, live search results, a follow store button like on social media, return merchandise authorization request, geolocation, and even product inquiry. Well, I hope you're as excited as I am. Okay, so let's build this marketplace together. Okay guys, so the very first step is to set up our hosting and register our domain name. And for this, we're gonna use Hostinger. So we have negotiated special terms with them. You can save up to 91% discount if you use the link in the description below. So click on the very first link in the description below where it says mrweb.tv forward slash hosting. And this is gonna bring you to this page. Again, this is a co-branded page that we have with Hostinger that gives you access to up to 91% discount, okay? So it's very important that you use that link. So once you're here, basically all you have to do is click start now. And as you can see, it's only $2.99 per month instead of $6.99 already, okay? Now, if you click on this, you can select your billing cycle and save even more money. So clearly, the longer your billing cycle, the more you're going to save. So if you were to select one year, you will pay $2.99 a month okay for the one year but after that the plan will renew at eight dollars 99 so this is the normal cost basically okay so you're saving here 108 dollars over the one year period now if you were to select 24 months basically you still paid two dollars 99 but in two years time you will renew at only seven dollars 99 okay so you're saving here 216 dollars now, if you select 48 months, so four years in total, you still pay $2.99 for the full year, okay, for every month. But when you renew, you will renew at only $6.99. So in total, you will save 432 US dollars. And all these three billing cycles here include a free domain for the first year, which is a nice gesture as well. Now, if you scroll down the page, you can enter your email address and log or log in using Facebook and Google, and then you select your payment method. So you have credit cards, PayPal, Google Pay, Alipay, and CoinGate. So very convenient indeed. And now I'm going to give you an additional coupon code, okay? So as you can see, if you select for 48 months, it would cost you 143.52. They will apply taxes on top depending where you're based in the world, okay? So based in Ireland, uh, myself, I would pay $176.53, okay? So this is my total cost for four years, okay? Now I have a coupon code. So here you click on this, and now you're gonna type all in capital letters, Mr. Web reviews okay and then click apply and look what's going to happen so 176.53 and now we're down to 158.88 so you saved an additional 10 percent on top so this is the bargain of the century you know when you see the quality of the service provided by hosting i have all my all my website hosted with them you know and that's basically it now all you have to do is proceed to check out and then i'll meet you guys in the next step and now that you are registered with them you can log in into your account okay so let's just click login use your email address and password very good as you can see now we are logged in into our account so the very first step is to claim our free domain so let's click on this together and right here you're going to type the domain name that you'd like to register okay so let's say for instance your domain name okay and then you can select the extensions so we have dot in for india dot me for personal website dot com for commercial dot xyz dot help etc etc as you can see a very comprehensive uh, selection here indeed so let's select dot com for instance as an example okay and then we have to check the availability now dot com being the most popular one chances are you will see this message here this domain is already taken Please look for another one, basically, okay? Then you have to look for a different variation of the same domain name. So in our case here, since we are building an e-commerce website, 
we're going to look for, for instance, to book e-commerce with Mr. Web. OK, so let's check the availability. And as you can see, this one is available. So to register this domain name, if you're happy enough with this, all we have to do is click claim domain. So let's click on this. So to register a domain name, you need to add your details, business details or personal details that are attached to it, obviously, you know, and then all you have to do is click finish registration. So as you can see, our domain name e-commerce with mrweb.com is being registered and there you go. This is done now. And after this, all you have to do is click continue and we'll be redirected back to our dashboard, basically. OK, very good. And as you can see, it is now active, which means that your domain name is now fully registered. OK, so let's go back to our home page. And now we need to set up our hosting itself. OK, so as you can see here underneath, I have all these different plans myself because I use them for all my different tutorials. I have VPN server, uh, premium shared hosting, WordPress starter and cloud uh, startup as well. But basically yours will look something similar to this one. Premium shared hosting. So this is the one that you get by using the link in the description below. OK, so to set this up is very easy. All you have to do is click setup and then start now. And then we can follow the different steps. Okay, so what are you doing now at the moment? Are you creating a website for yourself, for someone else, or you already have a website? Chances are you're probably creating this for yourself. Are you building it yourself? Most likely as well. And what type of website is it? We are going to build an online store. Okay, this is an e-commerce. And then do you need help building your website? We're going to say no thanks because that's the whole purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to do it. And then we're going to create a new website. OK, so let's, let's click on this and we're going to select this option here. So this is WordPress we're going to use as our main platform and then simply enter email address and password and click continue. There you go. So what we need absolutely here is WooCommerce. All the others are optional. So basically Monster Inside, Optin Monster, All-in-One SEO and Google Site Kit. You can install them, but your website will be very bloated and we don't really need them, you know. So let's click continue now. And then which look do you prefer? We're not going to select any of them. I have a much better solution for you today. So I'll skip. I don't need a template. And then we're going to select the domain name we just registered. Normally it should be there automatically, but you might have to click on the drop down menu and select it manually. OK, so let's click select. And then you have to select your nearest server to your target audience, obviously. So you're based in the United States, you have the choice between West Coast and East Coast. Uh, you have South America, Europe, and also India and Asia, South Asia. OK, so being based in Ireland myself, I'm going to select United Kingdom here, which is the nearest. OK, let's click change. And then now we can finish our setup. That's basically it. And now we can go straight to our WordPress dashboard or go back to our control panel, which is what we're going to do because we still have to set up our email address. OK, so let's click on manage site. And as you can see here, our website is running smoothly. So everything is in place and our SSL certificate has been installed as well. So everything is absolutely perfect. Now, let me show you how you can set up an email address for your website. So we go here to emails, email accounts select your domain name so at your domain name.com click manage and right here if you click on the plus sign here you can create a new email address for your domain name okay and right here enter the name you want to register so for instance info at accounts at your name at your domain name.com and then enter a password okay and all you have to do is click create and right here, they give you all the information required if you wanted to read this in any mail provider, like, for instance, Apple Mail, Outlook, Thunderbird or Gmail, for instance, you know, in which case you need your incoming uh, server, IMAP, SMTP and POP server, the different values. And also if you need to enable SSL and TSL, that's basically it. OK, so make a copy of this. Once you have this set up, you can click complete. And that's basically it. We're done already. And now finally, we can access our WordPress dashboard and start configuring our website. OK, so this is everything done for our server now. So we go back to websites. So we have our website here and now we can edit our website. So let's log into our WordPress dashboard. It's going to open a new tab. Very good. So welcome to your WordPress dashboard. So the first step is to do a bit of cleaning up. So as you can see of this message here, we can dismiss this all together. And now we're going to get rid of a few plugins that we don't need. So we go to the plugin section right here. Install plugins. And the first step is to bulk select them all and deactivate them. Apply. 
in a bulk select them all and unselect light speed cache we're going to need this for at the end of our tutorial so we're going to keep the light speed cache we'll just disable it for now while we're working on the website so bulk action and then delete and then apply okay very good and as you can see by the side a lot of those tabs are gone now so if you go back to your dashboard there you go now we have a very clean environment to start working on so now let's go to the front end let's have a quick look so if you hover on top visit site open in a new tab so this is basically what our website looks like at the moment so very basic and the reason why is because it's using the default theme that comes with wordpress is the 2023 so what we need to do is to install our own theme and also all the required plugins to get uh, uh, this up and running okay so we are going to use Dokken for this so this is basically the plugin that will allow us to build this multi-user uh, marketplace so this is the website here so as always i'll leave a link in the description below and again Dokken is one of the most powerful solutions out there at the moment to help you build a marketplace so let's address the pricing so as you can see this is the number one multi-vendor marketplace for wordpress with over 70,000 customers so you can try it out for free as you can see the uh, free version here that you can download from the wordpress repo and then we have starter at 149 so with this one you can create a full featured multi-vendor marketplace the professional is the same as the starter one with additional features and then this is the one that we're going to use for this tutorial here is the business one so this is the fully featured one has all the features you'll ever need and this one costs 4.99 a year now you have a lifetime version as well as you can see now obviously this is really up to you uh, depending how serious you are about this business but basically the one we're going to use again for today is this one here at 4.99 so once you have this downloaded now we can take care of our theme as well in the front end so Dorkin, they provide their own themes. So if you click on this tab here, as you can see, we have those two here. So this one is a paid version. It's mostly designed for hotels and maybe real estate. And this one is free. This is a multi-vendor marketplace. And this is the one we're going to use today, okay? So all you have to do basically is to click on details and then download the theme. And download this on your hard drive. And then save. And now we can go back to our WordPress dashboard and install the theme and the plugin, okay? So first we go to appearance, themes add new upload theme choose file and let's select the theme we just downloaded the file we just downloaded so it's called dokken develop.zip okay and then open install and then activate and now we're going to install our plugin so we go to plugins add new upload plugin choose file and this time select the file that you downloaded from their website open install so again, this is the business version we're going to install here and then activate plugin. And as you can see, we get a message here on top. Your Dokken Pro is almost ready and we need to install some core plugin to make it functional. Okay, so install now and then you will have this screen here that invites you to go through the setup wizard. Now it's really up to you if you want to do so. We're just going to skip it for now because we're going to go through all the options one by one and set everything from scratch. Okay, so we're going to click not right now and we're back to our wordpress dashboard okay very good so from here now we need to enable the pro version so we have a license key that comes with it so now we go to Dokken here and license here at the bottom and then insert your license key right here to activate it and then click activate license very good so that's activated now so let's scroll down the page and right here you will find woocommerce so what is woocommerce well it's an e-commerce platform that works conjointly with Dokken. so Dokken is built on woocommerce using woocommerce basically okay so first what we need to do is to configure woocommerce fully start to finish so you go to woocommerce and then settings so first right on top here you have to enter your address so they go something like this so let's pretend we're based in new york okay and then underneath you have to select your selling location so where do you sell to do you sell to the united states maybe united states and canada maybe everywhere worldwide so that's really up to you know so sell to all countries except four then you can uh, remove some countries from the list or sell to specific countries so let's pretend you sell to the united states okay so we select us and maybe canada as well okay those two just select those two and that's basically it okay and then shipping location so here if you're selling uh, physical goods you're probably shipping them somewhere you know uh, so here you can select those countries as well so for instance ship to all the countries that you sell to which makes sense you would uh, ship to canada and united states 
And perhaps if you sell digital goods, you might disable this all together because then you're not shipping anything. It's digital, okay? So depending on the type of marketplace that you're going to build, uh, select one of those options. So here, normally it should be uh, shipped to all countries you sell to. So right here, as you can see, you can enable taxes. So if you uh, register for that, uh, taxes or maybe GST in India, or whatever it's called in your country, you have to enable this. And then I'm going to show you later on how to set that up and set the rates, okay? So do you want to enable coupons? Uh, it's a nice marketing uh, strategy to get more sales. So you might want to enable this as well. So right here, you select your currency and then the way you want to display it and then click Save Changes. And then after this, we go to products. So from here, all you have to do basically is to change your measurement uh, weight unit and dimension unit. So this could be kg or maybe pounds and dimension unit the same, could be centimeters, meters, maybe inches or yards, uh, whichever uh, type of measurements unit that you're using uh, where you're based basically, okay? And then you have the reviews here. So do you want to enable reviews and product ratings? If this is the case, well, just tick those boxes here uh, based on your own uh, personal preferences, okay? And then click save changes. So next is to take care of our taxes and set this up, okay? So basically here, how do you want to enter your prices in the back end, including taxes or excluding taxes? So usually if you run a business, uh, you purchase everything excluding of tax and then you add tax on top. So normally it should be this option, but again, this is really up to you uh, the way you run your business, okay? And then in the front end for your visitors, how do you want to display your pricing, including taxes or excluding taxes? Now, if you run B2C uh, website, I would highly recommend you display this including taxes, okay? And if you sell to B2B, then you would be excluding taxes, which is most likely the case because you'll have here uh, different vendors on your website and then click save changes. And now we're going to set our rates as well. So standard rates here on top, okay, under the underneath taxes. Now we can set up our rates and now we can insert our tax rates. So let's say you're selling to the US, or in which case you have to add 10% tax on top, okay? And then you might have zero rate as well if you're selling to Canada because you're exporting then, okay? So let's do this together. So let's insert a row and right here you have the country code, so US. So United States, and you can break this down by states as well, or postcode even, you know. So let's say this is 10% in the US. So I'm going to put tax at 10%, okay? And you can apply this to shipping as well. So is the shipping uh, involved here? Yes or no? Do you want to in add tax on top? If, if so, tick the, this box. Now, save changes. And now for Canada, we're going to apply zero rate rate. So as you can see, I have reduced rate and zero rate. OK, so this is the one here and we're going to insert Canada here. So CA Canada and rate is zero. And then we're going to put here zero tax rate. OK, so basically when you ship to Canada, you don't add taxes because you are exporting in that case. So save changes. Now, again, this might be different in your country where you're based, you know, so make sure that uh, you buy by the law of the land, obviously, you know. So next we have the shipping. So from here, we're going to add our shipping zones. So we said we're selling to the US and also Canada. Now, here's the thing you need to decide from uh, this point on. Uh, are you actually the one fulfilling the delivery? Are you the one taking care of, of this? Like Amazon, for instance, fulfilled by Amazon and Amazon ships the good the goods. Or is it more like eBay when the seller uh, sells uh, will ship the goods and not you then? So you have to decide that. So I'm going to show you uh, both ways here, okay? So we're going to add our shipping zones first. So let's call this one United States and you can select your regions now. So this will populate automatically, basically, because we said we're only selling to the US and Canada. So you can select the areas, okay? So for North America, Canada, you can select even different provinces, you know? And the same with the United States, you can select by states if you have different rates per state, maybe. So let's say you have the same price throughout the whole United States, okay? And right here, we can add our shipping method. So let's go ahead with this. So let's click on this button. And here you need to select which type of method you want to apply. So flat rate, maybe it's $9.99 throughout the whole of the US, or you can provide free shipping as well in local pickup. So normally it should be flat rate, you know, in this case. Now you also have those three different options here. This is when the vendor, the seller is actually taking care of the shipping. So first let's assume you are doing the shipping, it's fulfilled by yourself. So we're gonna select flat rate, add shipping method, 
and now we can edit this okay so click on that and now you can set the cost so let's say maybe eight dollars fifty i don't know whichever it's, it is you know it could be 9.99 or 10.50 so let's click save changes so this is our flat rate setup now let me show you how you can break this down in different tiers so uh, clearly if you're selling an item of clothing it's not going to be as expensive than shipping a television or maybe a heavier item than that okay so depending on what you're selling on your uh, platform you might want to break this down in different rates so this is where shipping classes come in okay so if you click on this shipping classes now we can add different shipping class okay so let's say the first one would be clothing okay and then you copy this here Control v Control v and then you can add another one so i'm just going to create here televisions okay Let's say, okay, so on that this, we copy and paste again. So let's create just those two, just to show you here as an example, and then save shipping classes. And now we go back to our shipping zones, where we open United States, and then select flat rate. And as you can see, now you can set different prices for clothing and for televisions. So basically the cost price is 850, so maybe for clothing it's 850 as well. And maybe televisions is gonna be maybe uh, 34 99 or something like this okay maybe 34 50 let's go ahead with that and you can also apply a formula as you can see if you hover on the question mark here it will give you a few examples you know you can take the cost multiply by the quantity so this could be per unit if you ship one television is 34 99 and if you ship two maybe is, is times two you know basically so what you can do is basically multiply that and then put quantity here in square brackets and that's basically it okay and the same maybe with items of clothing and then all you have to do is to save those changes afterwards but obviously you can add as many shipping methods as you want so let's add another one together here and let's pretend that this time it's the vendor who's going to actually ship the goods okay so let me show you the other side of the shipping rates here so basically you have the vendor table rate vendor distance rate and vendor shipping so what's the difference well basically the flat rate here is vendor shipping is just one cost and that's basically it and then you have the table rate and distance rate so this is basically flexible based on several variables okay so let's select here vendor table rate and let's add the shipping method and now as you can see what it does basically is it, it will charge varying rates based on the user's defined conditions and it's the same with the other options so let me show you from the front end if you go to the vendor dashboard, I click on dashboard and right here we have settings and then I go to shipping and basically from here I can set everything up myself as the vendor. So this is basically variable and flexible based on the type of uh, region you are and the type of item you're setting. So basically your vendor will define the shipping rates. And then if we select the other one here, as you can see, this is table rate, okay? Now we can add the other one. So let's say perhaps distance rate is basically the same principle, but this time instead of a fixed price, it will be based on distance, okay? So that's basically how this works. So that, that's everything related to shipping. Now let's take care of the payments. Obviously you want to get paid. So basically from here, you can select any of those methods, payment methods, you know, so you have WooCommerce payment. So this is basically the WooCommerce one that's built in uh, into the plugin. And this is basically powered by Stripe. Or you can go down the page here and select any of them, maybe Dokken PayPal Marketplace or Stripe Connect or any of those payment methods that you have here. So if you're using Stripe, or uh, perhaps PayPal, you can use any of those, but you can also install an additional plugin. So let me show you, if you go to plugin now, uh, add new. So I'm just gonna open this in a new tab just to show you. So in the search box, if you type WooCommerce followed by the payment method that you want to add. So let's say maybe Amazon Pay, okay? There you go, we have a plugin here that you can install for Amazon Pay. So let's say maybe authorize, authorize.net. There you go, same here again, you know. So depending on the type of gateway that you want to use, you can always find a plugin that works. So let's select maybe just PayPal here altogether, yeah? WooCommerce PayPal. So there it is, okay? Now we can install this and activate it. Very good. So we get a message here, uh, connect your account. You can either click on this or go back to your payment method here and then refresh. There you go. So now it's been added here. You can see that's PayPal here at the bottom. So you can finish the setup. So click on this. And all you have to do is basically enter your email address. And for this, we have to click activate PayPal and you can simply log in into your PayPal account and it will link everything automatically for you. And then once you're done, go back to WooCommerce 
And there you go, that's done already. So now while you're working on the website, I would highly recommend you tick the, this box here, a send box. So basically this will allow you to actually test the platform without having to actually pay for something uh, with a, a, a card, you know, so you can just test everything. And once you're happy enough, before you go live, don't forget to come back here and untick this and then you'll be going live, okay? So after this, we have to go to uh, standard payments here and enable the PayPal features, tick this. Scroll down the page, save changes. Very good. And now if we go back to payments, you will see that it's enabled just like this. Okay, there you go. So that's done already. So next we are going to go to our emails. And right here is where you can customize all your emails going out from your website. Okay. So as you can see, you have new order here. You also have Dokken all, all related to deliveries and so on. Uh, support ticket and everything so if you click on this basically you can edit the content and how it will look like uh, once your visitors receive that okay but the most important part here i want to show is really at the very bottom here as you can see email sender option so you have to put your name here because all the emails will be received with the subject box and everything so as you can see here you put the name your email address and make sure that you change the footer section here as well. As you can see, it's, it says built with WooCommerce. You might want to remove that all together. And then you add your colors. Obviously by default, it will select the purple. That, that's the WooCommerce logos uh, color basically, okay? Now you can change this with your own. So let's say your own colors is perhaps maybe you have a red in your logo. You can just go and select it here, you know? So that's red and that's, that's it basically, okay? After that, you're done. So save changes. And that's it. We're done setting up WooCommerce now. So let's move to the next step. So that is to actually create our different product categories. So underneath WooCommerce, you have products. If you click on this, this is where you'll find all your products, basically. OK, so at the moment, we have no products created. At the moment It's just a, a, a sample product here. We can even delete that if you want to, you know, just trash this all together. So first, we have to create our different categories. So they're right here. OK, so I'll click on this. So right here, you're going to type the name of the category you want to create. So let's say clothing, for instance. OK, and then add new category. You can also add an image if you wanted to. So basically in the front end, it will display as a banner on top. And then we can create subcategories as well. So you could have, for instance, jackets and then parent category clothing. OK, let's add. And then you could have pants. And perhaps T-shirts and maybe socks. OK, let's create those four just to show you how this works. And then you can create a different category now. So let's create maybe televisions, we said, okay. And this time parent category, none, add. Or you could create electronics and then under electronics, you could have laptops, you could have televisions and so on. So let's create this, okay. So let's say electronics, let's add. So let's create one that's called laptops. And this is under electronics. Okay, there you go. And now if you wanted to put television under the electronic section, you can basically edit this. Okay. And now we're going to change the section here. We're going to add this under electronics update. And now you can go back to your categories. And there you go. As you can see, you have clothing as the main category with all these subcategories, electronic and underneath you have laptop and television. And obviously now you can do the same with as many categories as you want to have on your website. And then by the side, we have tags. So what are tags? Well, basically tags are small keywords that uh, your visitors can search on and find products. So basically, let's say if they were looking for a laptop, they could look for retina display. So this could be a, a keyword, you know, retina display at this and then you can do the same with anything it could be cotton it could be wool it could be uh, the type of fabric maybe the type of pattern etc etc so this is basically a way of narrowing down uh, their searches and find exactly what they're looking for using more specifically uh, keywords uh, these are called tags okay and then we have attributes so what are attributes well it's just a way of customizing the product so let's say if you sell clothing they usually come in different sizes. So size would be an attribute and then you can assign different sizes. For instance, small, medium, large, extra large. You can have the color as well, black, blue, yellow, and orange, and so on and so on. So these are attributes basically that will help you uh, to customize the product in the front end. So let's go ahead with size, for instance, add attribute. And as you can see, this is done now and now we can configure the terms. So let's add our terms. 
so we would have small or maybe just s okay small and then medium large extra large okay and now if we refresh our page you will see that you will organize that in alphabetical order which is not really what we want we want obviously small to be fast and then medium large and extra large so you can reorganize them so as you can see here you have those uh, toggle switches you can move them around basically okay so let's put this one fast small medium large extra large and that's it now they, they are in the right order basically and now even if we refresh they will stay in the same order so let's refresh our page together and there you go small medium large extra large so this is basically how you can create your different uh, attributes and now we can create our products so as you can see by the side with all products so click on this and now we can add a new one so let's create just one together as an example so it's very easy actually you know and then you can add products yourself and then obviously your vendors in the front end can add products themselves because that's the whole point of a, a marketplace so i'm just going to show you how you do it yourself in the back end and then i'll show you how your vendors do it in the front end so it's the same principle except one is in the back end the other one is in the front end okay so let's create a product here okay so first we need to add the product title so this is the name of the product so i'm just gonna copy and paste this here so i found one online so this one is called the lenovo idea pad slim 7i pro laptop so this is a laptop basically okay and then we need to put the description so i'm just gonna copy and paste this here so basically put all the specs and everything related to that laptop obviously you know so we're going to select our category here as you can see behind me we have this so obviously it's part of electronics and laptops now when you select categories you can select multiple categories as well you know if, if it applies to several categories now you can put them in different categories obviously so next we are going to upload our image so i have the image and the product gallery so product image that's your featured image the main one that will show up when they see the product on the listing page and then the product gallery is basically additional pictures that you might want to add so i'm just going to add one image here so let's select a file so i'm just going to go here and select this in my documents so i found one online there you go open and then set product image so that's done for that side so that's basically all i can add tags as well so let's say foldable laptop you can add them manually like this okay so wide screen maybe retina display remember we had this one so this one will show up automatically and you can add and basically create your tags okay so now let's go on the other side of our screen so basically here you have the product type so this is a simple product obviously you know it's just one item but you can create virtual product downloadable products and also variable products so what is a variable products well it's a product that comes in different sizes different colors as well like an item of clothing for instance can come in different colors a different type of fabrics and maybe different sizes. obviously you know so this would be a variable product so let's just create a simple product for now and i'm going to show you how this works okay so regular price for this one let's say 1499 perhaps it is also on sale at the moment at 1350 so is this a taxable product so this you have to set it up yourself you know and maybe you have a wholesale price as well so here's the thing with Dokken, you can set wholesale pricing as well and, and and all the wholesale quantities as well and this is where you would set this up okay so basically if they go on your website and log in as an end user so b2c that's the price they'll see but if they register as a wholesale customer they'll see a different price altogether so this one is maybe 1050 but you need bulk, uh, bulk order you need to order at least 10 or maybe 5 or something like this okay which will give you access to those discounted prices and then you have inventory as well you can set this in stock out of stock and the amount you have shipping as well you know so you can put all the dimensions of the product you have linked product so this is for the upsell and the cross sell so upsell basically you're going to add a product that are from the same uh, model but basically higher specs so this is upsell and then cross sell is a similar laptop so maybe not lenovo maybe acer or asus or a different make altogether and maybe a different model also okay so this is cross sell so then we have our attributes here so obviously there's no attributes for laptops it's just basically what it is but if you were to sell clothing like we said 
you might have different colors different sizes this is where you put them all okay and that's basically it for our product and if you scroll down you have the short product description so this is basically a teaser so maybe you can just copy and paste the first paragraph of the long description and that's basically it now we can click publish that's it all done and now let's have a quick look in the front end see what it looks like so if we go back here we have our categories clothing electronics so let's click on this one so there you go as you can see this is our laptop so let's click on this and very good so this is basically the price as you can see we registered as the end user here so this is the regular price and we have the image description and the full description right here and we have, obviously you have a shipping vendor info and everything is right there okay so this is perfect now as you can see uh, we have a sidebar here we're going to remove that obviously you know but this is just to show you up to uh, now how to create a product basically okay so this is step number one now let me show you how a vendor can upload a product so for this we go to the vendor area here dashboard and we'll have our products so as you can see you have products here if you click on that it will show up the product so obviously i am registered here as the admin of the website so this is why i have access to this but you can see clearly here we have an error basically your account is not enabled for selling please contact the admin so what we have to do is to first enable this and also as you can see the display the layout is not it's all squeezed up you know so we have to remove the sidebar completely now before we can proceed to the next step okay so first let's address the error message here so we go back to our wordpress dashboard and this time we go to Dokken and then vendors and you should find your account there normally as the admin of the website but one thing you need to do, as you can see, the status is not enabled. So you have a toggle switch here, so enable this. And that means that now you're enabled as a vendor as well. You can start selling on the website, okay? So if we go back here and now refresh, you can see the error message is gone. And now we have a new button here that says add new product. And this is basically how you can add a product as a seller a vendor on the website now let's get rid of this first okay because it's very annoying as you can see it's all squeezed up here it doesn't look good at all so let's go back to Dokken, and this time we're going to go to appearance and then customize and as you can see you have global header sidebars footer so this is the one we need here sidebars okay and then layout settings and as you can see at the moment the sidebar is selected everywhere so what we need basically on our store and all the pages is just remove the sidebar altogether don't need it at all at all at all so publish now and now if we go back to our page and refresh there you go as you can see now it's displaying properly so now let me show you how you can add a product as a vendor all you have to do is click add new product and there you go as you can see here you can upload an image product name price discounted price you can add more images select the category add your tags enter the description and that's basically it is very simple it's the same principle but just a different layout uh, for your front-end users so that's basically it okay now clearly some of your vendors might have a big inventory they might not afford to do that manually basically okay so they can also import their products uh, using this feature here so all they need is a csv file so an excel file uh, saved as a csv or txt file upload the file and that's basically it okay so as you can see we'll match up uh, the id and the sku and everything will be mapped properly and click continue and that's basically it you know you have your column mapping here and that's basically it once you've mapped uh, the different columns you can import and you're done in just a few minutes so this is an easy way also for your vendors to import all their products all at once without having to do it manually okay guys so now we're going to take care of all the settings that comes in Dokken and there are a lot of them so if you go to Dokken and then settings you will see there's a lot of settings you know here as you can see if you go through the page all these are different settings that you can actually use to configure your website exactly the way you want it so now we're not going to cover all of them but just the essentials you know just to get you up and running uh, you can always follow the documentation here if you have any doubt so first let's start with the essentials like i said we're going to go to selling options here and right here it's all related to the commission basically okay so how much money you're going to make so you have to set this up obviously you know so the commission type what type is it flat percentage or combined so flat could be for instance you charge 20 cent per uh, sale every sale that goes through your website you charge 20 cent or maybe more whichever you know it could be a percentage so let's say you earn 10.5 uh, percent on every sales 
uh, conducted through your website and combined basically you're going to charge a percentage plus a fee so perhaps 20 cent per sale plus maybe 5.5 percent commission on everything so this is all the different ways you can do so so let's go with the most common one which is just a percentage and let's set this to maybe 7.5 percent okay so it's a nice a lovely uh, commission for you and then here we have shipping fee details and tax fee details so basically this will define who will be receiving the shipping fee so normally it should be your vendor but you can take on the charge obviously you know so will you process refund yes or not if so you can use this and uh, you do so via an api so as you can see if you enable this you will automatically process refund from payment gateways when the admin approves the refund request so let's enable this so basically what that says is if you're using paypal and your customers are paying through paypal you can run the refund automatically without you uh, being involved at all once it has been approved by you or the vendor basically the refund will be automatically done which is going to save you a lot of time obviously so that's a very very nice feature indeed so right here we have enable selling so as you can see immediately enable selling for newly registered vendors so if this is on and someone registers on your website they can start selling immediately if you want to double check and vet them you want you want to disable this obviously you know so order status change here as well allow vendors to update the order status yes or no again this is really up to you you know i cannot make this decision for you okay so right here we have the new product status when someone uploads a new product so do you want them to be published immediately or pending review if you select pending review that means you'll have to enable all the products coming onto your platform so this might require a lot of work as well in the back end but that way you have full control over what's being uploaded on your website, obviously, you know. Now, duplicate product is a handy one. It's going to allow your visitors to duplicate the product. So it's going to save them a lot of time as well. And all the other options are pretty self-explanatory. You know, if you want to enable them or disable them, uh, just go ahead with that, okay? So now let's go to the next one, withdraw options. So this is an important one, obviously. This is when your uh, vendors will request uh, payments. So what do you want to do? So basically, you can configure everything here. So basically, what's going to happen here is that someone is going to order something online. They're going to pay 100% of the price. You get your commission out of that. And then whatever is left, uh, we'll go back to the, to the seller, obviously, you know. So if they're using PayPal, you can select PayPal automatically. And again, this will be done for you uh, automatically in the back end. Okay. So you can have bank transfer as well, custom or Skrill. So depending on which feature you're using, uh, feel free to select any of them. So minimum withdrawal limit. So some platform have that in place, like for instance, a minimum of a thousand or maybe 500 or, or 250. Again, this is really up to you. All the status for withdrawal. That's an important one. I think, it, I think the order should be completed. There's no way someone is going to withdraw money if the order is still processing or on hold. You might lose money then. Obviously, I, I would leave it like this myself personally. So exclude cash on delivery payments. So if you get paid cash on delivery, uh, they get paid cash on delivery. Obviously, you cannot uh, touch that money. Uh, so in this case, uh, you might want to exclude that as well. Now, if you offer a certain warranty, maybe 30 days, uh, maybe 60 days or something like this you might have a withdrawal threshold as well so make order matured to make a withdrawal request so they'll only be able to withdraw after 30 days or perhaps 45 days and this is important especially if you have a refund policy of a certain length of time so if if, if it's a digital platform especially if you're selling digital products uh, like plugins and themes or maybe uh, music and all of that if the customer is not happy with his purchase you can actually request a refund in which case basically you have to refund the money and you can set a threshold uh, basically in days so here at the bottom we have withdraw disbursement so do you want to do this manually or schedule disbursement if it's scheduled basically you can select the frequency weekly fortnightly monthly or quarterly so let's say maybe monthly that's usually how it is you know and let's say the first week on, on a Monday, so the first day, the uh, first Monday of the first week, or the first Monday of the second week. So again, this is really up to you, you know, to set this up, and then save changes. So now we have the reverse withdrawal. So what is reverse withdrawal? Well, this is a very, very clever feature. I tell you that much. So I'm going to go to the documentation and read that out loud with you. It's probably easier. So marketplace owners have struggled to sort out the commission system for cash on delivery. So when the order is paid with cash, 
how do they get their commission? That's the problem, you see. So they had to monitor the transaction manually and ask vendors for their commission, in which case they might not pay you and all of that, you know. So basically with this, it is all built in and it's part of the dark and light as well. So if you get the free version, this is built in as well. So this is fantastic, isn't it? And basically here you can set everything up. So first you need to enable it, obviously, you know, in which case it would be for cash on delivery uh, purchase. And then here you can set the balance, the reverse balance threshold. So maybe you can set this to $250. This will be set as a reserve uh, towards this type of uh, situation. Okay. And that's basically it. Once you have that, you're done. And there's a few other features, but don't forget to click save changes after this. Okay. Now let's have a look at our page settings. So this is basically to uh, set up our different pages. So I have the dashboard, my order, store listing, and the terms and conditions. So these should be assigned automatically. You know, you don't have to change this the only one you can add here is maybe the terms and condition so what you're going to do is basically create your page here once you have it created you can select it here basically select your tnc page and then click save changes okay so next we have appearance so this is to customize your store appearance so right here show map on page store again this is really up to you if you want to enable that yes or not but remember we enabled the shipping fee based on distance in which case you have to add the google maps api key which is important so map api source google maps or map box i would highly recommend to use google maps is the most accurate anyways you know and if you do so we have to create a map API key. So you have the link here. So right click on this, open in a new tab and let's go ahead and let's do this together. Okay, Google Maps landing page. So get started. And right here on top, as you can see, we have a few projects already. You know, these are different tutorials that we've done. Now you're going to create a new project all together. So let's give it a name. So let's call this one Dokken. Okay, and then create. Very good. So there you go. As you can see, now it's created. Now click select project. Very good. And now we can close the, the notification. That's perfect. So now we have to go to the APIs. So APIs here. Okay. So go to Google Maps platform. So there you go. As you can see, successfully enabled the Google Maps API. So they, these are all enabled automatically. Uh, before you had to do that manually. Now they automated the process, which is absolutely great. Like, you know, now we need to create a key. So we go to credentials. So there it is, Maps API key. If you click on Show key, there you go. Now we can copy this and we go back to our dashboard and now insert it here. Very good. And that's basically it. Now we can save that already. So that's our Map API done. And then you can enable recapture as well. So this is the anti-spam, Google anti-spam, you know. So if you click on this, you can enter the site key and secret key. And again, if you click on the link here, recapture, you can uh, enable that yourself. Just follow the steps. Now, right here, you have the store header template. At the moment, is this one that's active. Maybe you want to change this to something else. This one looks more like, uh, I would say, a Facebook uh, shop page. This one is slightly different and this one a bit modern. So whichever way you prefer, you know, you can select any of them. So I'm just gonna select this one here, okay? Now the store banner width and the store banner height. So basically this is the store, the vendor store. You know, when, when you go on their store, this is what it looks like. So if you go to the front end basically here, as you can see you have the vendor dashboard and you can visit your store. So if I click on this, as you can see, we'll show my avatar picture and the banner and underneath all the different products that I sell as a vendor. So this is basically my shop within your website. Okay, so that's basically what this is. And then you have the store opening closing time widget, enable store sidebar from the theme and show vendor info. This is really up to you and decide what you want to display on their pages. Okay, so I'm just going to save for now. Very good. So next we have the privacy policy. So this one is pretty self-explanatory. You know, you can either select a page or type them down here and this will be used as well throughout the whole website. So we have our colors, another important one, obviously. So two different options here, predefined color palette and custom color palette. So this is basically what you have here. So you can select any of those colors and it will be applied uh, through your whole website. Okay, so whichever color you like or you can customize them from, from scratch and basically use your own branding colors, okay? So based on your logo and all of that, and you can just change them here. For now, I'm just gonna use Ocean here and don't forget to click save as always. So next we have live search. So this is pretty self-explanatory. The store support as well. This is very, very simple to understand. Now seller verification, this might be a very useful one. 
So basically here you can authenticate your vendors by authorizing vendors to connect their social profile. So they can use, for instance, Facebook or Twitter or Google or LinkedIn to log into your uh, platform and on your website. And this way, basically, you make sure that they are really who they, they say they are, you know, or you can use verification SMS gateways to verify the users, in which case you can use Vonage or Twilo. Now, I don't have a Twilo or Vonage account, so I cannot show you this, but basically all you have to do once you're registered with them is to enter your number, uh, the account SID, the token here, and de define which type of SMS. So this is basically to verify their authenticity by using an SMS, a text message, basically. Or you can use the more, more conventional ones, uh, email verification settings. So basically, it's going to send an email to them, in which case, if you enable this, and as you can see, please check your email and complete the email verification to log in. And the email will say, please click on this link. Once they click on it, basically they are verified. Okay. So these are three different ways you can use to verify, to verify the authenticity of your users. So we also have social API. So this is basically to define the settings to allow vendors to use their social profile to register and log in on the marketplace. Again, you can use Facebook, Twitter, Google, LinkedIn, and even uh, Apple. Okay, so this is self-explanatory. All you have to do is just enter those credentials. Now, shipping status. So basically here, this will allow your customers to track their products. So once you've placed an order and has been shipped, you can track it online. So allow shipment tracking. If you do so, it will enable it. And then you can select the shipping provider. So depending where you're based, you know, you have Australia Post, Canada Post, CityLink, DHL, DPD. So these are all the different uh, main suppliers, you know, uh, Royal Mail, uh, UPS, USPS, and DHL. So basically these are all the main essentials, you know. So you can enable or disable some of them or enable them all, whichever you prefer. And depending on which courier company your vendors is using, you can add the tracking number and they can immediately have access to it from here. And then you have your shipping status. So these are the most common ones, you know, delivered, canceled, processing, ready for pickup, picked up, and on the way, on the way to... It's a common one, you know, always waiting for your parcel. And once you're done, as always, don't forget to click save changes. OK, so next we have a quote setting. So basically, this is for your visitors to request a quote. Uh, this one is pretty self-explanatory. And then we have the live chat. So this is another very nice feature. So as you can see with this, you can integrate and set up your site to let registered and customers chat in real time with vendors. So there are different uh, providers here. You have messengers, talk.js talk to and WhatsApp. So you can enable any of those and put those credentials here at the bottom, depending on which platform you decide to use. So next we have RMA, so return merchandise authorization. So this is another important one, obviously, because uh, if you sell uh, physical goods, they might break down like te televisions or laptops and computers, you know? So obviously if something happens, they have to, they have to return it and ask uh, for uh, repair or perhaps a refund altogether. So this is where you're going to enable this and set things up. Okay. So all the status, I would say here, it should normally be completed. They should have purchased the item before they can return it, obviously, you know, and then you can enable refund request as well, uh, just like uh, the same way on Amazon. You know, if you buy a product, you send it back, you're entitled to refund the exact same way. And the other features are pretty self-explanatory as well. And after this, don't forget to click save changes. So next we have wholesale. So this is a very, very nice feature as well. So do you want to allow your visitors to become wholesale customers? If this is the case, yes, no, basically uh, tick those boxes and set that up the way you want. Now, if you are based in Europe and running a business within the EU, you might want to uh, complete this here, which is the EU compliance settings. So obviously you need to fetch uh, the tax details, company ID, IBAN number and all of this. So these are all the fields you might be requesting by law. You have to request to be in line with the government guidelines, obviously, you know. So this is really up to you based on where you are. You have to select either of those options here, enable them. And then next we have delivery time. So basically this one is to allow customers to choose the time and date they want uh, their product delivered, you know. So if they're only home, maybe between five and six or nine to 12, they can do so. And basically here, well, it's a very easy one. You know, you have the time slot, et cetera, et cetera. So again, this is pretty self-explanatory, you know. Uh, this is basically enabling the dates and uh, time slots. So now we have product advertising, another big one here. 
So this is basically another way for you to monetize your website. So basically vendors can have featured product that they can advertise on your platform. A bit like Amazon, when you have uh, Amazon's Choice and all of that, these are, these are basically promoted uh, spots. And obviously you can charge them a certain fee for that. So advertisement cost here, maybe $15, let's say, okay. And how many slots are available uh, per vendor? So maybe they can advertise 20 products, 100 products. And after how many days will it expire? Maybe 10 days, 15 days, 20 days. Again, this is really up to you. Now, if you don't want to charge the advertisement cost as a fee, you can also have it as an, a subscription. So if you enable this, then it will be maybe a monthly subscription or something like that, in which case we can set that up as well. And once you're done, as always, don't forget to mark to save your changes, okay? So next we have geolocation. So that's all related to Google Maps, you know, uh, location of the maps on top, left, right. Show the map, both store listing or shop page. Where do you want to show it basically? You know, I mean, those are pretty self-explanatory. Just go through diff different options here, okay? Now we have the product report abuse. So if you are automating the process and automatically publishing all your uh, listings, you might want your users to actually report if there's a, an unsuitable type of uh, content, you know. So in which case you just enable this. And as you can see, you have all the different reasons because the content is abusive. Maybe it's spam, it's violent, or whichever reason you want, you know, maybe nudity or something like this, whichever, you know. Put all the reasons here and then your, your visitors can report the actual uh, listing and you can take it down basically. Again, save changes. So next we have single product multi-vendor. So this one, I'm just going to pull the documentation. Basically, it's to allow vendors to sell other vendors' product. It's a bit like, uh, I think it's on eBay or Amazon. Basically, let me just show you the picture here. You will understand immediately. So here at the bottom, you'll have sell this product now or sell. I have a similar product for sale. I think it's Amazon that does this, you know. So that's basically what this is. OK, so if you want to enable this, just set the features up here. And then here we have the vendor subscription. So this is to allow your vendors to sell product on a subscription basis. OK, and then your vendor analytics. So this is a self-explanatory one. Basically, you log into your Google account. Uh, using uh, Google Analytics and part of it will be shared with your vendors so they have access to the analytics on their own uh, traffic basically okay so this is what this is all about so we're all done with the main settings now so let's quickly go back to our product section here so products all products you will see two new products were added so you have the reverse withdrawal payment and the product advertisement payment so do not delete these obviously you have to keep them there at all time because these are products that we use through WooCommerce to actually uh, enable those features okay so just be careful so next we're going to design the front end so our home page the menu section add your logo and all of that okay and the footer section so before we do so uh, we need a bit of uh, content you know we need some products so what i'm going to do i'm going to quickly import some products and have them here okay so there you go as you can see i've created about 30 different products now so if you go back to the front page we can go and have a look at our shop you know visit shop open and basically there you go as you can see of all these different products so it could be anything you know whatever product you want to upload i used faker press here to create those different products so it's, but it was done automatically saves us a lot of time but again once you have all your product uploaded they look exactly the same now let's take care of designing our website now if you go back to the home page as you can see, there's nothing here. All we have is hello world, which is a, a blog post. We don't have any footer section. We don't have our menu complete, no logo, nothing. So let's design this together. So now if we go back to our dashboard here, we go back to Dokken, you will see it will display a warning message. So as you can see here on top, Dokken Elementor module is almost ready. So now to design our website, we need Elementor and Elementor Pro as well. So what we need to do is just install those two. So what we need to do now is to go to the plugin section. So plugins, add new, and we're going to add Elementor. So look for Elementor here in the search box. So there it is. So install and then activate. And then we need to install the pro version as well. So if you go to the elementor.com website, I'll leave a link in the description below. You know, you can just register with them and get the license. And once you have it, you can upload the pro version as well. So add new, upload plugin, choose file, and then select your plugin. So there it is. So open, install now, and then activate plugin. 
and now we need to connect and activate our license here so just click on this red link here connect and activate and there you go so it will look something like this you know let me zoom in a little bit so basically i'm going to connect this to my account hello at mrweb.tv so activate very good so as you can see now it is active very good as you can see now this is active and now we can start designing our website so first let's go back to Dokken here and we go to modules and right there we have Elementor. So it's normally already enabled, but just to be sure, because I've noticed I, I had sort of a glitch myself when I tried it. So you, you have to disable it first. There you go. And I enable it again and it will load the library. So this is going to be working now, okay? So perfect. And then now we can go to the Elementor templates here and add new. And we're going to create a new template here together, okay? So this time we're going to select the single store. So this is basically the vendor store, the landing page, the own store, okay? So I'm just going to put vendor store here, okay? So create template. Very good. And this should show up automatically here. So this is the reason why you had to go to modules and then enable, disable, and re-enable this. Otherwise, they wouldn't show. So basically, you can select any template that you want here. So whichever you like. So let's go with this one, for instance, okay? So insert very good so as you can see now we have a contact vendor the support team and, and the opening hours we we'll contact the vendor we have a, a contact form here we have the location all the information all the different categories where they have a product displayed and right here as you can see everything is displayed for us automatically so this is the header banner you have all the social media icons and obviously all that information is fetched dynamically from the database from the moment they actually uh, create their account okay so that's basically it so now we need to click publish so we're going to add a condition okay where do you want to include this well basically on the entire site okay and now let's click save so let me show you here so save and close so there you go now let's go back to the front end and let's have a look at our store okay so let's click on this and there you go as you can see now we have a totally new layout so uh, we have a banner here all the information etc etc okay so uh, all the message here by the side in the contact form and obviously all the products that we are selling on our store so that's basically it so that's one thing taken care of now let's take care of our home page so this is going to be the most important page on your website obviously because this is where everyone is going to land so you have to make a very good strong impression okay so now we can go back to our wordpress dashboard and from here we're going to go to pages all pages and add new so these are all the pages we have on our website so just create a new one okay add new so we give it a title so home page very good so publish publish and now edit with elementor okay so let me show you how you can design your home page so this is basically using elementor so as you can see by the side we have all these different elements which are called widgets and then you can drag and drop them on your page it's a very easy drag and drop page builder basically okay so as you can see you have the basic ones you have the pro and then if you scroll down the page you have everything that's uh, related to woocommerce so you have your products uh, your card checkout page and all of that and you also have dedicated Dokken uh, blocks as well so for instance here we have Dokken store contact form store location store product category menu and so on so these are all different widgets that we can use to design our page very good so let's get started so right here we're going to create a new section so I'll click on the plus sign and as you can see you can create your sections the way you want or you can import a template because you have Elementor Pro installed. You have access to all these different templates. And again, this is going to save us a lot of time. So I have those ones here. Now, if you go right there by the side, you can see you have all these different sections. So the first section on our page is the hero section. So there it is. And now we can select among all these different options here. As you can see, very professional looking. Now, obviously, this is just a template. Now you can tweak this around and make it your own so i think this one is pretty neat very simple so let's click insert very good so as you can see now we have uh, the hero section in place and this is our main heading subheading and we have here a, a subscribe button so we could use this perhaps and replace that with a search feature immediately okay so basically here if we click on the main section uh, at the moment the content width is boxed which is fine it's limited to 800 pixels which is fine as well 
But what we're going to do is to stretch the section. There you go. So it's taking the full width, which is much better, you know? Now, before I change the heading and subheading, let's change the background image itself. So if you go to style now, this is where you can add an image. So at the moment, that's all we have here. So this is basically a background overlay, as you can see. Now you can delete this one altogether. Let's go back to background. And now we're going to add our image. So I found one online. So I'll click upload, select image. So I found this one here. So let's say our marketplace is maybe about uh, cycling and everything related to cycling, maybe bikes and all the sort of equipment. So there you go. Now we have a lovely image which represents exactly what it is that we do on our marketplace. Now, as you can see, our heading is still there, but it doesn't stand out anymore. So what we can do now is basically add a background overlay. So you can close this section, you have background overlay, this one, open this, and now we can add a color, okay? So let's select black or white maybe. So let's go with maybe black for now, okay? And you can change the opacity. So basically you can go from fully clear to fully opaque, okay? So all you have to do is basically find a happy medium, okay? So perhaps around 50%, and then you can change the color. Maybe you can use blue or something like that, okay? So let's go maybe with a dark blue. There you go. And now, as you can see, we can change the, 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 the font here and maybe change the color as well. So let's change our heading. So we click on this widget and now we can change our text. So let's say online marketplace for cycling equipment. So again, like we said, it is there, but clearly there is not enough contrast between the two. So now what we do, we go to style. And as you can see, we can change our text color. So let's try in white instead. There you go. That's a lot better already. Now our title, you can also add maybe a shadow. So if you go to text shadow here, you can play with it a little bit, you know. So as you can see, horizontal, maybe two pixels, vertical, two pixels, and maybe the color. We're going to try to make it a little bit darker. As you can see now, it stands out even more. That's perfect like this, I think. OK, and now we can take care of our subheading. So let's click on this and then we can replace that with our own text. So I came up with something here. OK, and as, again, as you can see, it doesn't stand out. So what we need to do now is to change the font color. So again, we go to style, the text color here. So I'm going to select full uh, opaque, fully opaque and white. There you go. And obviously this is maybe too thin, you know, so we can go to typography. So typography is basically a fancy word for font. And from here you can change everything related to the font, you know, so you can change your font family. So let's select maybe Montserrat. Okay. Or well, 16 is fine. So we have light, maybe medium. Let's try perhaps semi bold. Yeah, that would be just okay. I think, you know, so 16 is maybe too big maybe 14 and obviously the line height is too big as well so let's reduce that a little bit maybe just about 1.5 there you go so that's basically it for that and now we have this section here so if you click on this as you can see this is edit form so this is a form basically okay so we don't want that so what we can do is replace that with a search feature uh, that would allow them to look to look for items and, and look for products on our website so we click on those nine dots we go back to all our different elements and we look for search so we have search form so drag and drop and you're going to drop uh, drop it just underneath this one there it is okay now that we have inserted this one we can delete this so then right click on it and delete there you go and now we have this one on its own okay so let's click on this and now we can configure this and uh, set it up okay so right here as you can see the skin classic you have minimal and also full screen so i think the classic one is absolutely fine it stands out you see it immediately so what do you want the placeholder to say but probably search you know or maybe search any product or anything like this you know and that's basically it so now if they go on your website they'll be able to search throughout the whole website and only fetch the information that they were looking for so that's basically it. so let's click update uh, don't forget to save your work from time to time so that's basically us done with the hero section and now underneath we can add maybe a few products or categories okay so again we go back to our main elements 
And like we said, if you scroll down the, the, the page here, you will find all the WooCommerce features, all, the, all those widgets here, okay? So let's add a few products. And for this, all you have to do is basically drag and drop it right there, okay? We'll create the section on its own. So at the moment, we have four columns, four rows. So that's maybe too many, you know? So what we can do perhaps is show different uh, products from different categories, perhaps, or something like this, you know? So maybe you could have different sections, maybe latest products, featured products, or best sellers, or... Uh, yeah latest products or something like this okay so basically here we have four columns i think this is fine the layout is fine but maybe four rows is too many so let's go with two and right here we have query so I'll click on this and as you can see you can select among different options so latest products product on sales product featured manual selections related products upsell and cross sell so let's go ahead with the latest products for now okay and you can decide to order them by date or uh, maybe alphabetically popularity and so on and ascending or descending okay so that's basically it for this now we could add maybe a little title on top you know uh, there's no harm so we're going to add a heading here on top there you go so here we're going to type latest products okay we're going to center that styling we're going to change the font to black it's probably better and this is okay i think like this you know now ideally we need to add a bit of breathing space a bit too close you know so if you click on your main section here we go to advanced as you can see you have margin and padding as well you know so if you unlink these basically the padding will add spacing between the latest item and the uh, section itself and margin will add uh, spacing between the two sections. So that's the difference, okay? So what we need here is actually a padding. So let's try maybe 20 or 50, or we'll see, let's go ahead. So maybe 35 would be okay, you know? Now we need a bit of spacing between the product and the section, okay? So you know what? Let's go with 50. I think it's maybe better to have more breathing space. Now latest product, if you click on that, we can apply the same principle. You go to advanced, unlink and then we're going to add some padding at the bottom so let's try maybe 20 yeah okay 25 perhaps there you go so now as you can see it's much easier on the eye uh, to have a bit of breathing space in between so if you scroll down the page you can see online marketplace for cycling equipment and then latest products and then we can carry on and add as many sections as we want now so now maybe you could add a call to action, maybe to emphasize a special offer or something like this. Okay, so again, we're using uh, Elementor Pro. So if you click on this, we can import a template. So let's call this call to action button. Okay, so let's have a quick look what's available. Very good. So not something too big, not too small, you know, something just about uh, the right size. So maybe this one here, as you can see, find something interesting. And we have this one here. So I think this one is probably better, you know, so insert. Very good. And again, we're going to click on the main section. Uh, this is boxed, but we're going to stretch the section to full width. As you can see, we'll go from one end to the other. So find something interesting, get better result by upgrading today. So maybe you can change this to something else, a different message, obviously, you know. So let's click on this and change the content. So enjoy 15% discount with your first order. Okay. And then underneath we can add a coupon code maybe okay so use coupon code and then ERT 125 PO1 okay whatever it is <laughs> come up with a coupon code and that's basically it so this is absolutely fine now again as you can see we need to add a bit of breathing space on top and bottom so advance here <clears throat> so we don't need too much padding I think that's way too much you know so what we're going to do we're going to reduce that to 50 here and 50 there that's all we need really but what we need to add is a uh, margin on top so maybe 100 here uh, okay so that's too much so maybe 50 and 50 at the bottom as well with the next section and now perhaps we can add a background overlay okay so let's click on the section again we go to style uh, we have an image already i think the image is fine but you can replace that maybe with someone cycling you know and then let's add a background overlay so you want this to pop obviously you want this to uh, stand out so let's select a color that's vibrant maybe in the yellow or something you know uh, orange perhaps okay something like this very good and now we can change the opacity a little bit so perhaps just about there very good so now the coupon code doesn't stand out anymore so what we need to do is go to style and change the color 
and we can use maybe a, a black let's use black again uh, classic black uh, nothing wrong with that so there you go so if you scroll down the page as you can see you will see this immediately will catch your attention you might see a product or two that uh, interest you and then immediately here you see oh 15 percent discount with my first order great and then they copy and paste this and use it at checkout and they can be enjoy 50% discount. That's basically it, okay? So next we could add perhaps more products or our categories perhaps, okay? So let's add this together. So we go back to our Elementor page here. So scroll down, we go to WooCommerce, okay? So there it is. And as you can see here, we have product categories. So drag and drop, okay, here. And these are all our categories. So not all our categories have uh, images. I just added a few. So what we can do is basically select how many we want to display. So maybe three columns, okay? And only three different categories. We're gonna select three categories all together. And we go to query, show all manual selection by parent or uh, current subcategory. So we're gonna select them manually, okay? And now we can select our categories. So we're just gonna select categories related to cycling, okay? So we're gonna add mountain bikes, downhill bikes and perhaps race bikes as well so there you go now we have three different categories so that looks very nice so what we can do again is to add maybe a heading so you can either select it from here or you can duplicate it from the top remember we had a heading already here so what you can do is basically click on it right click on it duplicate okay there it is and now we have the item here so if you go to the navigator you can move this around as well you know put this on the right so you have your heading here and you want this to be here on top of your product category so grab this and then move it okay and now if you scroll down the page you will see you have a heading here and now we can remove that so if you click on this now you can change this basically so our main categories okay or our cycling categories perhaps okay so because we said it's all about cycling so our cycling categories and then they can they know exactly what this is okay so very good so we can move to the next section now so perhaps we can add all the main cycling products okay uh, the, be the best sellers or something like this okay so again we don't have to uh, create everything again we have that section done already with this one here remember so you can copy the whole section if you want so just right click duplicate okay now again we could go to our uh, navigator here so with the whole section i can move this at the bottom there you go close this now and if you scroll down you will see you have this section so it's there twice obviously but now we can tweak this okay so if you click on this latest products so latest bikes this time okay and if you click on your section here as you can see columns four rows two so maybe because it's related to cycling maybe we have three and then rows two you know basically like this and now you can define which product you want to show again you go to query and then you can include or exclude certain products so again we have latest products sales featured so maybe you want all the featured product okay or maybe all the products on sales or maybe you want to select specific products that you want to showcase on your homepage. in which case you have to include them okay just like this basically and select the terms okay so that's basically how this works so i think we're fine now so let's click update and let's have a, a quick look, okay? So if you click on this I here, preview changes, click on this, it will open a new tab. And there it is, so this is our homepage. So as you can see, online marketplace for cycling equipment, our latest products, uh, our coupon code, cycling categories, and the latest bikes. So I think that looks pretty good, you know, would you agree? Now, if we go to our actual website, as you can see, if we refresh, the home page hasn't changed because basically we need to assign that home page now okay so if you go back to our wordpress dashboard and we go to settings and then reading right here we need to assign the home page so as you can see your home page displays your latest post which is the case now you know now we need to select a static page and select that page so the page we just created now is called home page let's do this okay save changes and now if you go back to our home page and refresh there you go so this is basically our home page now as you can see it displays on the home page immediately but we have this section here in the background that says home page so we should get rid of this okay so what you can do is edit page here just click on that and we're going to change the template basically uh, that's assigned to it okay so template here you can see it says default template you're going to change this to elementor full width there you go and click update right and now preview preview new tab 
and there you go this is our home page as you can see we have the menu here and there's no spacing in between them so now everything is displaying properly okay now as you can see we don't have a primary menu we don't have a top menu we only have our categories here we don't have a logo either and our photo section is all messed up so let's take care of this now okay so let's go ahead with that so for this we go back to our wordpress dashboard and in order to make it easier for us we're going to open two different tabs okay so the first one is appearance and then menus open this in a new tab and we have appearance and then widgets and then open in a new tab and keep one of the dashboard ready-made just in case we need to do other changes okay so basically right here we have a top menu and a primary menu so there is nothing assigned at the moment so we have to create that from scratch okay so we go back to the menus here and as you can see there are no menus at the moment so we have to create a new one so we're going to call this one main menu okay and then click <clears throat> and then click create menu okay and now we can add our different items so basically by the side you have all these pages you have post custom links categories and also woocommerce endpoint so now it's really up to you what you want to add there now if you go on top you have screen options you can even add more features like product categories okay this is a hand very handy one you can add products landing pages as well you know and uh, product tags and store category so let's add all of these and now as you can see you can select among all these different options so product categories as you can see you have cycling race bike downhill bike and mountain bike so perhaps you want to add this to your uh, menu section so what we can do is basically select them all okay and then add to menu and as you can see they all add it up as one line here now we want to break this down obviously into categories and subcategories so race back as you grab it you can indent it basically just like this okay and now it becomes a sub menu so cycling is your menu this is sub menus okay so we want to add the home page perhaps as well you know so pages view all and then look for your home page add very good so now we're going to change home page and change the title to just home okay very good and perhaps you want to add as well some other categories perhaps you want to add electronics with laptops and add them straight to your menu section and again electronics here, main section and then sub menu sub menu menu sub menu okay just like this so let's try this okay save menu very good and now we need to assign this to this uh, area here so if you refresh at the moment it is created but it's not displaying yet so for this we go back here so this time we go to appearance and then customize and right there we have menus click on this view all locations and this one is our primary menu so primary menu and now we can select the one main menu and it will show up now there you go so there it is so if you publish this and i will go back to our home page and refresh there you go as you can see at home cycling so i can go to these different sections electronics and so on so this is basically how you can create your main uh, menu section and it works the same way for the top menu basically okay so if you go back to our customization close this and now we go back to menus okay now we can create a new one so create a new menu I'm gonna call this one top menu okay so create and now you can add whatever you want you know maybe you want to add my orders and request a quote and perhaps store list okay so add to menu there you go save menu and again we go to appearance customize and then menus all locations so this one is called top menu so here we're going to select the top menu one publish and let's go back to our home page and let's refresh and there it is guys you can see now request a quote my orders and store list and this is our main menu and obviously we have the, all the categories here as well so it's very easy for your visitors to find exactly what they're looking for now let's replace our logo here so again we go back here so we, we remain in customize you have a small pencil you can click on it and it will bring you there immediately so you can either have this as text so you type your title in your tagline or you can upload a logo again this is really up to you you know if you are ready made logo i would highly recommend you upload it okay so let's upload a logo together now so let's select the logo upload file so i found one online so just a random logo you know so there you go open and let's select 
And now you can crop it, you know, so you don't want all that space around. So let's crop this. So again, like I said, it's basically something I found online, you know, so it could be just uh, your logo. And then you crop the image. Very good. So there it is. Now, obviously, we have to hide the site title and hide the uh, tagline as well. And our logo is right there. Now, the logo is a little bit small, you would agree, you know, and you can't change it from here. So what I would do is use CSS coding for this, you know. So in the front end, it looks like this. So if you right click on it and then inspect. So let me show you the code here. So this is basically our max height here. So we can change these settings, you know, if you increase this maybe to 95, there you go. This is about the right size, you know. So what we can do is just copy this code here. So control C. Okay. So we go back here and then we go to additional CSS and paste it here. And as you can see, our logo has changed size. So I'll click publish to save your changes, obviously, you know, and that's basically it. So this is done, our header section. So let's refresh here. So we can close this, okay, and refresh just to make sure everything is okay. So we have a top menu, uh, logo, and main menu right there. So now all you have to do is basically our footer section. So let's take care of this. Again, for this, we go back to our WordPress dashboard. We come out of this. So what we can do basically is to add maybe a few menus, uh, menu sections here, you know. So your main seller, so it could be cycling, electronics, and clothing okay and right here would be just a short about us with the logo of the company and that's basically it okay so let's keep it simple so again what we're going to do is to create a new uh, uh, menu okay so create a new one so we're going to call, call this one maybe electronics okay create and we're going to add a product categories okay so these will be basically electronics or so television there you go add to menu there you go. So save menu. And then we could do the same with the other two. So there you go. So I created one that's called bikes, clothing and electronics. So we have a three different footer section menu ready. And now we have to customize this, obviously, you know. So like we said, we open one that's called widgets so appearance widgets, remember? So right here we have footer one, footer two, footer three. So as you can see, footer widget one, two and three. Okay. So if you click on this, basically at the moment we have nothing. So what we can do is basically replace this. So click on add block and we're going to add a small paragraph and an image. So the image first so this is going to be our logo we're going to select for the media library so this is the one here the small one okay very good now we can change the size so just grab this and make it a bit smaller you know you don't want it too big and we're going to add a paragraph now okay so it's a short about a section so let me type this very quickly so there you go perhaps something like this okay now we're going to add the menu to footer widget 2 so click on the plus sign so this is menu okay and then navigation menu okay add this and now we can select which menu you want to show so this one is bikes for instance okay so i'm going to put here cycling as a title okay and then we do the same with three and four so add so we're going to select our um, widget so this is menu navigation menu and then we're going to put the title so this one will be clothing and select the one that says clothing here and then item four, expand, and then menu again. Navigation menu, and then select this one. And this one we said is going to be electronics, okay? And then select the menu electronics. And that's basically it, okay? Now I click update. And let's go back to our homepage and let's refresh. And there you go, guys. You can see now we have a lovely uh, footer section. So basically company logo about us cycling clothing electronics and now they can click on any of this and it will bring them directly to the product category and now if we scroll down the page completely you will see this we can add a footer menu as well so let's do this this is going to be our last step so let's go back here again appearance customize and perhaps we can use the exact same menu that we had okay so for this we go to menus all locations this one is the footer menu and we're going to select the exact same as the main menu. So is this one at the bottom basically okay. Very good. So let's refresh. And there you go. As you can see, you have home, cycling, electronics, and you can select all your items from the bottom of the page as well. So that's it, guys. We're all done now.